and welcome to the first ever Layman's Terms, a new video series I am producing to cover singular topics in a short, sweet, and effective manner. These will be used to cover smaller topics, such as the premise of this video. That premise is, what are motion values, how are they used, and why are they not the whole picture? Motion values are a term brought over from the Monster Hunter community, thanks Jinx, though other games have also used them. A motion value was derived from Monster Hunter where each attack had a different animation, or motion, and a unique damage value. You can treat motion value as shorthand for an animation's damage value. In layman's terms, a motion value is just the damage value any one attack has. You can find these for any given attack of a Genjin character in their talent sheet. Just select skill details and it will be shown on the left hand side. Each of these percentages is a motion value. So now that we know what a motion value is, okay I'm just going to shorten motion value to MV, so much easier to say. Cool? Cool. So now that we know what MVs are, how are they useful to us? I mean, we can use them to calculate how much damage something is going to do, such as a har how hard a single move can hit, such as Mona's ultimate. But that's only part of what good this does us. In truth, these values are best used when paired with a value for time. What we can do is find out how long any singular attack or combo takes by using frame counting. When we do this, we can find out the time it takes to execute, say, a normal 3 combo as Kli. Once we know how long this particular combo takes, we can take this length in time, do a simple math equation with the total motion value of said attack chain, and receive a derivative number that is representative of the total amount of damage dealt over a specific time period. We commonly sift everything down to a period of 1 second, as that is the time period most people are capable of grasping. This is where we get the motion value per second, or MV per second, terms. Using these values, we can calculate very interesting things. Using this new metric, we can compare each auto chain a character has and figure out which has the highest DPS capability. We can also then compare these to charge strings and other combos, such as Deluxe Weave combo. This is very useful in calculating the optimal combo strings for any particular character. Great! We now have a standard metric that we can compare all characters with, right? Unfortunately not. The thing is, at the end of the day, motion values and their useful derivative in motion values per second are effectively just multipliers. As such, they're at the mercy of all other stats a character has, specifically in Genshin, your crit stat, your damage percent totals, and even your total attack, which itself depends on your base attack and weapons base attack, means that relying on just motion values or motion values per second to compare two units is generally relatively inaccurate. This is also ignoring the hobgoblin that is AoE. Hitting two enemies with a single attack in theory doubles the effective motion values, but trying to judge an AoE value is like trying to say I could do a backflip, why can't you? It's just not an easy thing to take into account due to how many different variables there are and how few of them we're actually capable of controlling. As an example of this, Deluke struggles to get much above 100% damage percent on any one particular hit that he's capable of doing. However, Xiao is very easily capable of hitting 150 or 160%. Of course, these do depend kind of on weapons, but again it goes to show that though they have similar base attacks, just by adding in damage percent, Xiao all of a sudden jumps massively ahead of Deluc. But then you also have to take into account that Chow can't vape or get an amplifying reaction, whereas Deluc can, which then pushes Deluc a lot higher up, meaning now we have to compare Deluc with his damage percent and his vape modifiers, and Chow with his damage percent modifiers, and at that point we're not calculating motion values, we're calculating damage values. And with this, 
I hope you can now see why motion values are not the whole picture. However, they are still extremely useful in giving us the information we need to know what the highest motion value potential on a character is, so we can better calculate their total DPS once we actually do those calculations, and also give us peak numbers of what a character is potentially capable of doing. And since these are frame counted, we can add 4 frames, 5 frames, 6 frames to a particular combo to simulate for a player not being able to do frame perfect, allowing us to better calculate what the average person might be capable of achieving. Letting us get a relatively general DPS number that an average person can achieve. Now, all this is useful to know, but at the end of the day, why does this matter to you? I personally do this math before making DPS comparisons anyways, though I don't show it as I typically write this down in a notebook or on, with pen and paper, and the notebook is an absolute mess to include in videos. But, well, the reason is that I'm going to be looking to find a new way to incorporate this extra information in a meaningful way. Thus, I will be trying to avoid just showcasing pure motion values only on characters, as that doesn't give you the whole picture. I mean, I currently do have a method of doing it, but it's kind of difficult to fit into the tight window we as creators have to put out relevant information as fast as possible in character first impression videos. But again, I do have a few ideas in mind and will be trialing them in the coming videos. And with that, the first layman's terms is over. Honestly, I, while recording this, I'm wondering if the concept is going to turn out as well as I think it will. As always, I am writing and recording this before the rest of the video is edited, because how else would I be doing this? Can't really edit a video, then voice it, or well, you technically can, but it's difficult. Uh, I will be leaving a straw poll in the description about how we're potentially going to deal with layman's terms as a potential series moving forward. So do feel free to send me feedback there or in the comments, because I will actually be checking all this stuff this time in order to get an idea of how best we can proceed with my future content. And remember, the subscribe button down there as well. Even if you do turn off the bell, it still helps out the channel immensely. It's only been, well, recording this a few days by the time the video is edited, probably a week since the Hu Tao video went out and we're already well underway to the 10,000 subscriber mile marker. I think we might be at 7,000, we'll have to wait and see. I myself am off to record a couple other videos at the same time as this, as I'm starting that new pipeline that I mentioned previously to adjust my workflow to better assist in making faster productions. I do appreciate you all for the continued support and understanding, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.